Hey friends, today we're gonna look at how to lay out the stair stringer. Okay, so we already have our calculations done for the rise in our run, so we know how tall each step is gonna be and how long each step is gonna be. Now, what we need to do is put that on a framing square with these little stair clamps. You can use little uh, C clamps, you can use little vice grips, whatever you want to use is fine. I like these little things because they fit really nice in my tool belt. So, the way you work these is you figure out what your rise is for each step, put the square there. For these, it's going to be 7 and 3 eighths. So seven and three eighths, and I'm gonna put my square there, and then it's gonna be 10 and a quarter because a two by 12 will work great as a tread. So I'm gonna make it 10 and a quarter. Once I have those put in the correct spots, I'm going to need to test it. So I will put this square flat on the board, bring it up to where these square clamps hit the edge and then I'm going to make some lines. You can see here that I've already made quite a few tests. The reason you want to make a test is because just putting this square clamp right on the 7 and 3 eighths doesn't mean that that's what it's going to be in your actual depth when you make your line because this one will determine this. As this goes down, as this would get longer, this would change too. So, put those on there, make a line. So I'm gonna mark here, then I'm gonna take my tape measure and measure that line and see what it measures. If I need to move this one one way or the other, go ahead and do that. As you can see, I've done that multiple times to get it exactly what I want. So now we're ready to go and lay out the actual stair stringer. So we're going to go to the end first. Okay, so I have my the end of my board here. What I'm going to do is put my stair clamps right against the edge here. And I'm going to go to the very end of the board I'm going to make a mark. The reason I went there is because I can either make this my first tread or I can shift this over. I don't like these and so I'm going to get rid of them. I'm going to mark down here by using my straight edge of my square. And I'm going to make this my first tread. I'm going to cut that off, cut this off. This will be my first tread. Now we're going to go to this spot and keep moving on. So I'm going to take my square again, slide it on down, and the point where this point meets the edge of the board, that's going to be the start of my next riser. I need to make sure my square is firmly against my board. And there's my next riser. Riser and tread. Once you look at it like this, it's going to be tread, riser, tread. So we'll go ahead and continue that on down, making sure we're lining up exactly what we want. So now I have all of my treads and risers that I need. This is the last riser. This is where it stops. It's going to sit on the concrete at this point. So now I need to make a parallel line with this going back. I can do that a couple ways. I can just take my square, line it up with this edge, 
and then mark that going back. Or I could have taken my tape measure, marked down here, marked down there, just made a line. This was easier. So now I'm almost ready to cut out, but not quite, because we have to take off a little bit of this riser. We have to reduce some of that. The reason being is we have stair tread material that will go on top of this tread. If we would put it on here and on the next one and on the next one, those would all be uniform, but this one would be taller because you're going from concrete to the top of the stair. So now we have to reduce on this one whatever we're using for tread thickness. I'm gonna use two by 12s here for my treads because that'll be the finished tread. I won't have to put anything else on there. So I'm going to reduce inch and a half. So I'm gonna move this line up an inch and a half So now this becomes my cut line and I actually like to write cut on it and point an arrow so I know which one I'm gonna cut so it's not confusing. So I'm gonna come in here with the saw, cut this one, cut this one, and then that'll be my last riser and tread. So when I go ahead and cut these folks, I'm gonna cut them with a circular saw and I wanna make sure that I stay right on my line and I only go to this line. I don't cut past it because we don't want to reduce this strength. We don't want to reduce this thickness at all because that will reduce strength. If you look at a stair tread for as far as full lumber, we only have about that much on this full two by 12. So we want to keep as much in there as possible. You don't want to overcut and reduce that down to a smaller size. 